Good morning, church. Good morning, brothers and sisters. What a beautiful day we have today. Indeed, we ought to rejoice in it. We welcome you all uh, in the name of Jesus Christ to this worship service. Uh, shall we have a, a brief word of prayer? Holy and eternal God, we give you thanks this morning. We are glad that you have woken us up. We are so blessed to have Jesus Christ as our only Lord and Savior. We are mindful, O oh Lord, of our sins. We are mindful of where we have fallen short this week. Yet we come here today, joining this worship service from all our comfort, from our places, and we humbly ask you to forgive our sins. And we ask you, O oh Lord, through the Holy Spirit to lead us in this worship service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our body, our blood, our life, and our nourishment. Amen. Now, in this moment, church, we will allow our worship team to lead us in song. You were my redeemer. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I was lost, now I'm found by the Father. I've been changed from a ruin to a treasure. I've been given a hope and a future. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing, surely every season you are good to me. Oh, oh, oh you are good to me. My sorrows, you must strength my home for tomorrow. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Season, you are good to me. Sing, oh, 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 you are good to me. Oh, oh, oh you are good to me. Surely your goodness pursues me. Surely your heart is still for
good to me. Lord, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, you are with us, you are blessing us, Lord, and we are assured of that every single day, God. We stand here today, Lord, whether it be good, whether it be in bad terms, God, but you are here with us. You walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. We shall fear no evil, Lord, because you walk with us. And so we thank you for that truth, God, and that every single day we walk in the light of who you are, Lord, to us. And so, God, I just pray that this morning that we may receive your blessings tenfold, God. That we may share those blessings with everyone around us, Lord. And so we are so thankful, God, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And your overflowing joy, God, in us. So we are blessed and we are assured that you have blessed us now and forever. Amen.
sits on heaven's mercy seat holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i King of kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Wow, what powerful worship. Can we just conclude that uh, with a prayer from the fourth century from the North African Bishop, St. Augustine? O oh God, from whom to be turned is to fall, and to whom to be turned is to rise, 
Grant us in all our duties your help, in all our dangers your protection, in all our sicknesses your healing. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our life, and our nourishment. Amen. At this point, we will ask our sister, Lulama, uh, to lead us uh, in uh, giving and in the prayer for our giving. Good morning, everyone, and good morning, Grace Point, as you watch us online. I'm going to pray for the offering this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we give thanks to you for the ability to gather today in your name. While the numbers continue to decrease, we know that the pandemic remains with us. And we pray for all those who have been affected by COVID, whether it's through loss of lives and lively, or livelihoods. As we enter the season of Lent, may we draw nearer to you as we, pray, as we prepare for Easter. As we prepare our hearts to give, I'd like to share what Trevor Hudson said about giving. For the deepest motivation comes from knowing that we are made in the image of a generous God. God constantly gives himself to us in love. As God's image bearers, we are created to give. This is why we are, we are at our happiest and most alive when we're able to give in love. This is what we are made for. One of the biggest sources of personal misery and unhappiness is our refusal to give. We are going against the image of God within us. Amen. Hey everyone, so glad you could join us today. So we are a few days into the Lent season where we focus on the book of Matthew and particularly Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Join us every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. either online or in person where you have to register beforehand. Let's find out what's happening with the Gen Now team this Sunday. Hi Grace Point family and welcome to our Gen Now world. 
For our kids ages 0 to 9, we are starting our amazing lens series called Up, Up and Away. For more information about this series, please visit our kids webpage where the children will be able to download and watch our lesson, lesson reviews, um, our doodle studio craft and much, much more. For our grades 4 to 6, Ilza has an amazing menu for you as well. You have Fridays Online, you've got Sunday Online Connect, and don't forget about your Grace Point Online Lesson, Gappers. Now remember, if you need more info or activities or resources, don't forget to go and visit the Gap webpage. For our 13 to 18 year olds, Claudia has an amazing series for you that started last week called I Am Not My dot dot dot. Well, it could be I'm not my phone, TikTok, or whatever you fill in the words. And don't forget to connect with Hloni on a Sunday. If you would like to be confirmed this year, please note that confirmation starts on the 26th of February. Please contact Hloni for more information. Well, that's all from us here at JNOW. See you next week. Bye. Has your child confirmed their faith journey as their own? Many parents would introduce their children to Christianity, but there comes a moment in life where they need to claim the journey as their own. And so we'd love to encourage parents to encourage their children to consider signing up for our 2021 Confirmation Experience, where we will be helping young people make this decision. And that is, I want to continue journey as a Christian. Join us, Confirmation 2020-21, a whole new experience. We look forward to hearing from you. Connect with myself, Shoni, for more information on how your child can be a part of this experience. Don't forget to connect with us on WhatsApp. Um, we will find all the latest details of what's happening at Grace Point during the week. If you haven't signed up, check out the number below and send us a hello. Thank you for joining us on GPTV today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. episode what we're looking at is we had a conversation with um, Reverend Zondile Molo, we had an opportunity to speak to psychologist Anela Siswana and also Bishop Joshua Maponga and in this episode we looked at, like Lonnie's introduced, the church's ethical response. We developed uh, what we had uh, to deal with, with what is protocols uh, that we as member churches of the SACC are going to employ in our response to what it might mean to gather as a congregation and as a people. Why on churches gathering should they not be trusting God's power to protect them against the spreading the ongoing virus? I think for me, what, what this pandemic has done is it has made us to think about fellowship in a different way. Anela also touches on that and he says how much he's benefited from the flexibility and the freedom to have a home-centered spirituality and not always having to go to the church. Good morning, everyone. Can I first of all thank our worship team for their spec spectacular guide this morning in worship, and then also to welcome amongst us one of our local preachers, Sipo Lukosi, um, who is on the road to becoming a minister in our church. My first scripture reading this morning is to be found in Exodus chapter 23, and there we will read the first nine verses. Do not spread false reports. Do not help a wicked man by being a malicious witness. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with a crowd. And do not show favoritism to a poor, 
person in their lawsuit. If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to take it back to him. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you fallen down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure you help him with it. Do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death, for I will not acquit the guilty. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds those who see and twists the words of the righteous. Do not oppress an alien. You yourselves know how it feels to be aliens, because you were aliens in Egypt. And then we read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and there the first 12 verses. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we begin our series on the Sermon on the Mount. And as you can hear, the series... Must I use this thing? Yeah. Put the mic here. Is that all right? Yep. Hallelujah. Um, we're beginning the series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we begin what, a, what is traditionally known today with the Beatitudes. And I read you part of the law that was given by Moses to the people of Israel, and you'll remember that Moses went up the mountain and spent time with God. So I'm sure that Matthew, when he says now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. And let me just say that sitting down in that tradition at that time was the taking of the position of authority. And if any... Jewish person had to read this passage, immediately the mountainside would reflect back into that place where Moses sat with the people and gave them the law from God. And the passage that I read to you is a passage which exposes laws of justice and mercy. Now, 
I also want to suggest to you that as we read the Beatitudes, we need to be aware of the fact that they're not a kind of wish list. And you decide, well, I would like to be one of those people who is merciful. In actual fact, the Beatitudes give a description of what the Christian life is meant to be. So, if you want to set an agenda for focus and reflection during the, this 40-day season of Lent, you will, this can be your reflection. Are you poor in spirit? Do you mourn? Are you meek? Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Are you merciful? Are you pure in heart? Are you a peacemaker? Are you persecuted because of righteousness? Are you insulted, persecuted, and falsely accused? And do people say all kinds of evil against you because of Christ? That gives you some kind of agenda to reflect on as you come into the season of Lent. I'd like to reflect just briefly about some of the challenges that we find there. And just before I do this, the same passage is found in a slightly different form in St. Luke's Gospel. Uh, in the Sermon on the Plain, and um, I do hope that we had uh, some of this on the screen, where Luke says in chapter 6 and verse 20, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their fathers and mothers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for that is how their fathers and mothers treated the false prophets. Now you can hear that the lesson in Luke is a very uncomfortable passage and probably exposes the fact that one of the issues that disturbed Luke most deeply was the disparity that there was between the rich and the poor. And so, too, even in 2021, the huge disparity, for instance, in South Africa alone, between those who have and those who have not should leave us deeply, deeply concerned as Christians. Might not concern those who do not see themselves who call, or who do not call themselves by the name of Christ. But for those who call themselves by the name of Christ, one of the major agendas which we may have at the present moment is a focus on how do we begin to open spaces for people who don't have, for people who go to bed hungry each night, for people who are desperate to care properly for their families. That must be one of the issues that faces us. And in this time of Lent, I want to encourage you to start imagining how specifically 
as God's people, we can identify, first of all, with the poor, and not in a way that they're second-class citizens, but in a way that begins to enable their imagination to see themselves differently than just being a nuisance, a beggar on the side of the road, a noise in your ears, a damnation to your peace of mind. But how do you create a relationship with those who are alienated and bring them into the fold? And so I want to suggest to you that some, some of the indication in the Beatitudes opens up some of the work that we've got to do. To be poor in spirit. In other words, to constantly recognize our need of more than our possessions and our intellect and whatever else life comforts may be. And to recognize profoundly that without the presence of God, there is a huge vacuum emptiness in our lives. It's as we begin to allow ourselves to recognize our vulnerabilities that we open a window for healing, actually. One of the things that I was told by a psychiatrist that I sometimes talk to was that Many people came out of the wars. And let's look specifically at the Second World War and the enormous sense of jubilation that there was in parts of the Western world when they had defeated uh, the opposition, the German forces and those allied to them. There was a real sense of power and accomplishment. And many of the young people who had fought on the front lines, and they were reasonably young, they were taken to war at the age of 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 4, came back into their home countries, and the doors opened for them, and prosperity flourished. Flourished. Many of them ended up at the top of the pyramid, with lots and lots of more money than God had sheep, to be completely frank with you. And they were smug. In actual fact, to speak the truth, they didn't really need God. And then time went by. And they got to the age of 50, 51, 52, 53, and many of them then had the most profound psychological dysfunction. Something would happen, a noise, a color, a piece of music, whatever, that would take them straight back onto the battlefield. And they would have such profound trauma in the presence of their prosperous, successful life that ultimately their entire existence collapsed. Their relationship became, relationships became dysfunctional. Many, many of them ended up in divorce, there was deep depression. Many of them committed suicide, in fact. They had got to a place where they no longer needed God. And yet, they were carrying within themselves wounds that went way, way, way back. And so it is with many people who go through profound trauma. They get to a place where they can pack it away very neatly, and then, then the pain comes. Blessed 
are the poor in spirit. Those who throughout their life can recognize their profound need of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you are going to move close to those who are alienated, to those who are poor, the only way is in the same humility that Christ had. For instance, he went up a mountain, 5,000 people, hungry, and the voice of a small child brought the solution to that huge devastation. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. And so I want to suggest to you that it's as we, we determine at the beginning of Lent that every single one of us, in whatever opportunity God gives us, can in actual fact begin to go specifically into those situations of brokenness and build a bridge. But one of the things that I think is critical for us to recognize is that in a church, of course, it sounds wonderful if you're going to be involved in reconciliation. In a church, it sounds the absolutely right thing to come and bring people into places of healing. But I do want to tell you that the ministry of healing and the ministry of reconciliation is agonizing, agonizingly conflictual. And if you are going to go into these places, listen to what Jesus said. You will be persecuted because of righteousness. People will misinterpret your motivation. People will find you as the place where they can express their deepest angers and resentments of what has been the past and their present suffering. It is not an easy road. I had a strange experience once. I was asked by, actually by the moderator of the Uniting Reform Church, if I would go to Sannishof. And there was a, a cameraman who decided that he wanted to follow some of the work uh, that was happening in the Northwest. And on this particular day, he came with me. Uh, we started off at Marikana. From Marikana, we went across to Kulini, and we had a meeting with the farmers and the community, and it was, and we'd done a lot of work in the, I'd done a lot of work in that, in, in Kulini, and Kulini was good and clean and fresh, and the the meeting took place in a nice, decent boardroom, and everybody spoke through their anger at one another, but nobody did anything funny. You understand? There was no ugly violence. You understand? And so we'd managed to pacify the poor so that they could ultimately become satisfied with their dysfunction. And we waltzed away there and we went to Sunnyshof. And the problem in Sunnyshof was that that community had not yet been mollified. So we went in and I was introduced and I asked the community if they would speak about what was disturbing them. And during the week there was a, a young man who was disabled, who had been attacked by a farmer and left almost for dead. And the community was beyond angry. And as I opened up the door and gave them permission to speak, you have no idea how the vitriol poured out of their beings in a way that was actually very frightening. The little cameraman who'd come with me was very scared. Um, and at one point, 
somebody came into the room with a tire. And um, he, he saw it, and he came up to me, and he said, don't you think it's time that we try and get out of here? And um, eventually, some of the community leaders stood up, and they managed to quieten down what was really turning into a riot. But let me just say to you, if you're sitting in a safe place at the moment, we really need to come to terms with the fact that some of this anger in our nation is just below the surface. And who, who is going to repair the alienation and the broken? Who, who? And so I stand before you with an uncomfortable message at the beginning of Lent. There is no one that God can send but you. We might sit in papered comfort. But God warns us today, wake up. And you may say, but God, I can't speak. I don't know how to do this work exactly like Moses, exactly like the disciples, exactly like the people that he is calling today. Yes, you're completely incompetent. I am completely incompetent. I need you to know that I believe that. But, blessed, blessed are you when God takes your meekness, your sadness, your need of him, your hunger and thirst for justice, your mercy, your purity of heart, your determination to build bridges. For yours will be the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we come before you with the agony of the brokenness of our humanity. Knowing that it was into that space that you could come and offer an alternative. And so the blind believed that they would see again. And so the deaf heard music again. And so the leprous and the rejected found dignity. And so the sinners flocked because in you they found a home. Enable us as your community today, particularly in the devastation that we have been through because of this virus, Help us to see beyond just the virus into the brokenness of our communities and be determined to build a bridge in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the sick, those who at this very moment are struggling to breathe, those who have cancer, and are scared of dying. Those who have AIDS and are prejudiced against because of their conditions. Those who are broken because their relationships have gone sour. And we pray for your healing. We pray for those who lead in education or in politics, or in church, or in health. And we ask that you raise up people for us in this country who tell the truth, who struggle for the poor, and who have a clear vision of a new beginning, of the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for ourselves, weak, Fragile, but willing. Take my life, 
and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. We ask all this in Your name and for Your sake. Amen. You're my constant within us when your servant related the message of scripture to us. Did in our hearts burn within us when we discovered that instead of being poor in spirit, we have been wealthy and therefore denied your presence in us. Lord, did in our hearts burn within us when we discovered that rather than being the persecuted, we are the persecutors. Lord, we thank you for this word. May it transform us. May it renew our minds during this Lenten service and may it bring us closer to you. Now at the end, we ask that your peace, which surpasses all understanding, your wonderful and unmerited grace, the love of your son Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us, be with the church which is virtual, and the church which is physical now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>